Hello guys, what's going on? So this is finally the review of the MHD software for our M135i's and M235i's. Um, it took so long, I know I promised it a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I waited for a special reason because two days ago MHD released their new 1.0 maps, as you can see in the app. Um, these are all the updates that came with the 1.0 map and the one I'm most excited about is that you can actually uh, control the exhaust flap now in sport mode that it's permanently open uh, as you could with the MHD and this was the main thing that uh, JB4 offered that MHD didn't yet so I'm really excited that MHD supports this uh, option now. So a lot of people had uh, questions about how difficult it was to install MHD and it's, it's really easy to be honest. Uh, so I just decided to make a little video on how to go about installing MHD. So the first thing you do is uh, download the app. The app is free when you download it and you'll get into this menu. As you can see, we're now on version 1.0b, which is the correct one. If you're the first time installing MHD, it'll take about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on which cable you are using. Um, so what they recommend and what I also recommend is the ECU of the car has to work really hard for a really long time, about one hour. So you have to make sure that the battery of the car doesn't die out in the middle of the flashing. So what you actually have to do is go into here and just connect your battery to a, a charging dock so the car stays charged and doesn't go out because I think you'll run into some nasty issues uh, when the car runs out of battery uh, in the middle of a flash because it'll reset a lot of values without correcting them properly uh, by the end of the full flash. So once the car is in the battery charger, you can just get in and you just start the car without your foot on the brake. So you start the ECU of the car without starting the actual engine. And what you need for the, what you need for the install, I have it right here. I keep it with me all the time so I can fix stuff on the way, um, is a a K DCAN cable and then a port that lets you connect the USB into your phone. So these are the two cables you need. It's this cable. MHD has the, uh, the cables they recommend on their website so you can just buy them off there. And this is just a cable uh, that uh, is decided by which phone you use. I use a OnePlus so I have the USB-C cable attached to it. Uh, and this is all you need. The, the next step you have to do is uh, preparing your phone. So what you should do is, uh, also if you buy it for the first time, you have to do an extra step. Uh, and I don't have it anymore because I already bought the map. So you have to buy the map and you have to go into the license store and you have to buy the license and then the package for the correct map you want to buy. So I just bought a, a normal license and then a, a pack for the stage one, two and two plus maps. That's really all you need uh, if you don't want to run math or something else. So you go into the store, buy the maps, and then you get into this interface. By preparing your phone, I mean, after you bought it, you no longer need your internet connection. So you're going to turn all of those off. Um, and you also make sure that your battery is on full charge because uh, also your phone has to work for those 40 minutes and you really don't want your phone to die out in the middle of the mapping. So make sure your phone is charged, everything's off, so there's no interference, there's no sudden update that can start, there's nothing online that can happen because you're disconnected from the internet, and that should cover your phone. The next step is actually covering your uh, car. So what you do first is disconnect the air conditioning just by pushing off and go less, less, less until it's on the last block and then the next one will turn it off. Then you go into the for your MMI system here, you go to options and if I remember it correctly, uh, here the second option says uh, switch off control display. So that's now also off. Um, and then the next thing you do is you find the OBD port in your car. So it's right here in the footwell. I already have something plugged in for my digital display. So you just pull it out. The plug is in there like this. So you plug this one in and it turns red. So you know it's connected. Now on my OnePlus, I have to do a little extra step. I have to go into my settings and turn on the 
OTG so I can transfer data. One more thing, advanced. Uh, I I'll see if this will do, if I turn it in now. Yeah, the MEZ app opens automatically. So that's when you know the cable is connected correctly. Flash MHD map. It's contacting the DME or the ECU of the car. And here you can choose between the different kind of maps. So the stock map is just nothing. Uh, but MHG says installed. You can also uninstall it completely. Um, so these are the maps. Map one is just stock power. Stage one, and you can choose the different type of fuel that you're going to run. Um, so I am actually going to run the stage two plus map variant 1.0.6 and I am using 98 run so that's the version that I'm going to choose so you just click on it and then you can adjust the burbles so the extra settings and these are all the settings that you can choose so I have the cold start noise off so it doesn't start loud anymore when it's cold um, you can choose those when you still have the OM cat down pipes, but I don't have those. I have DCATs. And then I'm going to choose the new option with this exhaust flap always open in sport mode and remove the top speed limiter. So you, then you just go back and you go into maps right. And as you can see, it says two minutes, but in reality, it's really more like four to five minutes. You just click it and you will see all kinds of uh, wrong codes and fault meldings on your screen. Fault meldings, that's a new word I just made up. <laughs> Uh, that, that's a little bit Dutch with English uh, into each other. So you, you get all the, the codes on your screen. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Um, it's the car that's flashing the ECU. And as you can see, it says five minutes left and you just have to wait. Don't do anything. Don't try to start the car. Don't touch anything. Um, with the screen and air conditioning of the car, you should be using as little energy as possible. So now you're just going to wait for four minutes. And in the end, the car will say that it's ready and um, that you have to turn on your ignition, but I'll show you that in a few seconds. So I'm just going to fast forward the waiting. So in the meanwhile, while we're waiting, I'm just going to explain quickly the different maps because that may be unclear to some of you. So uh, stage zero, as I already said, is just a stock map. You can also completely remove MHD from it. So that's uh, a step further than stage uh, zero. Uh, and it'll actually try to remove it completely so that people at BMW can't trace it anymore that the car has been flashed before. Um, that's handy. That's what we'll do when I uh, turn the car in for service or something like that or if something happens to the engine. Um, stage one is just a power increase uh, when you have uh, no additional modifications. Uh, stage two is when you have either uh, just an intercooler or just a, a downpipe, an improved downpipe, like a catalyst one or a, a 200 cell one. And stage two plus is when you have a downpipe and an intercooler. Um, now what I and a lot of other people are doing is we are using stage two plus um, with only a downpipe because an intercooler is uh, like, a, an intercooler is like uh, 1,000 euros and I don't really want to spend it. And what I did to, to solve the, the issue, it, it doesn't really solve the issue, but it ke keeps it safe, is I don't drive the car on a, on a racetrack anyway, and I don't drive it for extended periods, very hard for a long time. So I installed this P3 digital gauge and I have the intake temperature uh, gauge on here. And I just um, watch that my temperature doesn't go over uh, 38 degrees. So I try to keep it under 40 degrees as a maximum. And if I drive hard, uh, it'll rise to like 44. And if I drive then slowly um, at a decent speed, it'll suck in enough air to drop it down to like 35 again. And then I'll give some gas again and I'll keep it around 40. So I just keep it that, that uh, I just keep on paying attention that it doesn't overheat without the intercooler. And that way I've been fine for like 
two or three months now uh, on stage two plus without an intercooler and everything is working perfectly and there's really a big difference between stage two and stage two plus it's really stage two plus is really where it's at so i'd really recommend either getting an intercooler or getting a gauge that you can visualize the intake temperature so you can run stage two plus so as you can see the car is still uh, giving all kinds of messages messages and um, it's still riding the ECU, but we're slowly coming to the end here. It's on 95%, 10 seconds left. And one more thing, I, I forgot they put it in here, but I coded it. Uh, they tell you to turn off the headlights, but I have them coded so they're not on right now, even though they're on automatic. So if you don't have that and they're on, there we go, you can hear the ECU resetting. Now my headlights go on, restarting the DME, it says coding the DME. So now it's going to get rid of all the messages on your dash. There you go. Now your navigation turns back on. Also shows some braking system problems. Success. Turn off ignition. So the car, the app started ignition automatically. So you just turn it off by clicking it once. And then it says wait for 30 seconds. And a good indication that I try to use is if you have an automatic, the parking lever, the park will uh, glow up in green. And I just wait until this light is off. And this is the, li the last light that goes off uh, in the car. And that's when the ECU is completely shut off. So first the letters on your dash will drop and then the P on the gear lever will drop. There you go, dash and gear lever are now off. So I just reach into here, I pull out the plug, I put my P3 gauge back in the OBD. I hope you guys can see this. And I just remove the cable from my device. And there you go, now the car should be flashed. You just put your foot on the brake, ECU starts up. And you push start. Car starts, no loud start, cold start, and everything runs fine and you're now officially tuned. So you can just drive. I'd recommend driving a little bit normal and calm for the first like 30 miles or kilometers that the car can adjust a little bit to the new ECU and then you're just good to go. So thanks for watching. I really hope this helped. If there's more questions, uh, things that are unclear, things you didn't understand, just ask away and I'll be glad to answer in the comments. Let me know if you liked it and if you really like the content, let me know by subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, goodbye.